the most broken people. Can be great leaders. His people did not call him General or King. They called him Kukul Khan, the Feather Serpent God. Killing him will risk eternal war. He's coming for the surface world. What you whisper, they have lost their protector. Now is our time to strike. Show them. Cool, yeah. Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This will be my new Black Panther 2 Wakanda Forever trailer. Marvel just dropped a whole bunch of new footage with a bunch of Easter eggs, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. The movie's coming out in November. Of course, I'm going to be doing a bunch of videos for it. I'll also do a movie ticket giveaway when we get a little bit closer to it actually coming out. But this trailer is just meant to show you way more Namor, what's going on with his character, as well as more of what's going on with the Wakanda characters, what's going on with the new Shuri Black Panther. They do confirm that it is Shuri as the new Black Panther. And we get a bunch more footage with Riri Williams' Ironheart with a couple different versions of her suit. So I will explain the Mark I version of the suit versus the Mark II, and we've actually seen the Ironheart trailer at D23 with, I think, the Mark III version of the suit. But just starting at the beginning of the trailer footage, they start with T'Challa's funeral. They're all wearing white because a lot of cultures internationally wear white at funerals instead of wearing black. They're holding his Black Panther mask. Obviously, they debut Shuri's Black Panther mask at the end of the trailer. One of the big differences you notice in her costume is that she has way more gold in it, which I think is a reference to Killmonger's golden jaguar version of the suit. Like, she was talking to him about his new version of the suit in the first Black Panther movie. And his whole thing is that he didn't want to be showy. Like, the whole idea is that we want to stay off the radar. So let's avoid the gold highlights. But Shuri is all about the showy style of it all, kind of like Killmonger was. You also notice the exterior of her Black Panther suit has the same tattoos that she had on her forehead in the first Black Panther movie. And obviously, this is her holding T'Challa's Black Panther mask. And that's just meant to parallel her becoming the next Black Panther because the voiceover, which comes from Namor during this funeral procession, is how broken people become the best leaders which is also meant to be a reference to him becoming leader of his people, like he's a prince of his people. I believe his parents also died in a similar tragedy to Black Panther's father, T'Chaka. So the sad music at the beginning of the trailer is a reference to both of the characters, like Shuri lost her brother, T'Challa, but Namor also lost his parents. That might have something to do with the big conflict that's happening in the events of the movie. One of the big things from the comics that they're doing is his winged feet, like he is meant to be a mutant in the MCU. He's been a mutant for a long time now, meaning that mutants have existed in the MCU. Like, I think Miss Marvel is like 15, 16 years old during the events of her series, so like, she's been around for that long. Mutants have been around for way longer than that. We just haven't seen them yet. We just learned in Deadpool 3, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine is coming back. He's a core X-Men character. The movie is going to take place in the MCU per Kevin Feige and Marvel. Now, the entire movie might not take place in the MCU. Like, they might have a little bit of multiverse stuff going on. Or Deadpool will at least joke about it. But clearly, they're rolling hard on mutants through Marvel Phase 5, introducing them or revealing why they've been hidden this whole time. And I think the idea is that they're actually going to release that new X-Men movie during Marvel Phase 6. They just haven't announced when yet. But it is always possible that it gets pushed to, like, right after Avengers Secret Wars. I think by the time Deadpool 3 comes out, then we'll know a lot more about what's happening with the actual new X-Men. Namor is also called the first mutant in the comics because he's like the first mutant-based character to debut in comics just in general. So they might have some references about that in the movie too. Like in the MCU, they might call him the first mutant. One of the big changes, though, for his backstory is Atlantis. So in the comics, he comes from Atlantis. They obviously want to avoid the comparison to the Aquaman movies. So what they're saying in the movie is that in the MCU, the city that he comes from is called Talokan. It's based more on Aztec and Mayan culture. And the whole idea is that their race just descends from ancient Aztecs and Mayans. 
In real life, the name Talokan is actually based on one of the underworld realms in the Aztec codices ruled by their rain god named Talok. In Aztec mythology, it's meant to be this paradise for souls who died of water or storm related deaths. In the comics, that god character is the storm god Teteo. In the trailer, you hear M'Baku talking a lot about Namor and the way that his people think of him. He says his people refer to him as Kukulan, which is the feather serpent god. That god is actually based on real life Mayan mythology. But it's why he wears the suit with the headdress, but it's a reference to his winged feet, his mutant abilities, his powers. His people think of him as a god the way that you would think of Thor as a god. Like Thor is an actual god in the MCU, but Namor is really just a mutant. The actual Kukulkan god in real life Mayan mythology is this Mesoamerican serpent deity worshipped by their people in the Yucatan Peninsula before the Spanish conquest. So I think part of the idea in the MCU, in their people's history, the Spanish conquest happened and some of their people migrated to this different area of Talocan and eventually it descended beneath the waves. But the whole idea is that they've kept it hidden and it contains vibranium and the reason why they find it is because of Riri Williams' technology when she's hired by a group of scientists who I think are going to be backed by Doctor Doom. Like he's going to be revealed to be the person who's pulling the strings behind this kind of orchestrating things from the shadows. I don't think that we're actually going to see a version of Doctor Doom in the movie. They might just tease him at the end like they'll tease that Von Doom is behind the funding for Riri Williams' technology that was trying to find vibranium. Everybody in the MC wants to get their hands on that sweet vibranium. And as you can see, even though it's beneath the waves and it seems like they have a very different type of people, they're meant to be highly advanced like the Wakandans. Like they are a threat to the Wakandans and all their weapons are also made of vibranium. All those spears that you see are made of vibranium. That's why the Wakandans are so worried about them because their shield won't protect them. Otherwise, they wouldn't really care. It looks like Namor's people attack this vessel that's searching for vibranium getting close to their city. They have a bunch of scenes of M'Baku and his people up in the mountains of Wakanda. All these ships just seem like supplies they're ferrying around. I believe he has a much upgraded role in this movie and I think a lot of people are theorizing they're going to split the roles of the Black Panther and the ruler of Wakanda. I believe that Shuri, like they show in the trailer, is going to be the new Black Panther but I think that M'Baku is actually going to take over rulership of Wakanda. Because you see a whole bunch of Ramonda in the first part of the trailer, but then in like the later footage when things get real crazy, you don't see any of her. So I think something probably happens to her during the events of the movie. M'Baku also seems a little more shrewd when he's talking about Namor, whereas Ramonda seems like she goes on the war path. Like in the previous trailer, she says she's lost her entire family and it makes it sound like she thinks that Shuri is dead. There might just be some twist with her in the movie before she comes back as the new Black Panther. But for a little while, she might think that her entire family is dead, like both T'Challa and Shuri and her husband. So I think part of the idea is that you have this brewing conflict with Namor and Wakanda, and she doesn't help anything, like she kind of makes it worse. Love the special effects for Namor's flying too, like it almost looks as if he's jumping across the sky. One of the other brand new things that they show you in this too is Michaela Cole's character, who I believe is playing a version of the Midnight Angels. She might be Anika's character. The Midnight Angels are sort of like a special elite group of the Dora Milaje. Like as hardcore as the Dora Milaje are, they're one of the most badass fighting forces in the MCU on the planet. Within their force, the Midnight Angels are like the special ops team. They have upgraded armor. There's also footage in the trailer that seems like her character is fighting against the regular Dora Milaje. So it seems like there's some big division in their ranks. And that probably has something to do with the conflict over Riri Williams with Namor and Wakanda. All this stuff going on behind them in the lab here is vibranium related, like the ship is being invaded by this force, probably on the orders of Doctor Doom secretly looking for more vibranium for his technology. This is Riri Williams with a version of Ramonda and this is Namor hovering outside the throne room waiting to attack them with his spear, like he gets ready to throw his spear through the window here. Remember, it's a vibranium spear, he has vibranium so that's why he's able to do this. This is Namor's people coming after Riri Williams because it sounds like they believe that she's responsible for Doctor Doom's people finding their city. This is their vibranium spear coming through her car and I believe her license plate is a reference to the first appearance of Riri Williams in the comics which was in Invincible Iron Man number 7. I think this is meant to be Shuri on the motorcycle with her and this is her in her Mark 1 suit. Later in the trailer when she's in Wakanda, you actually see her creating her Mark II suit. This is actually what it looks like. It's very close to the comic book version of the suit. Her arc reactor looks kind of like a heart. That's why they call her Iron Heart. This is just Ramonda addressing the United Nations. I think this is just the whole idea that things are heating up because the rest of the world wants that vibranium. This is just more of Namor's people attacking them with water flooding into Wakanda. That's meant to be a bit of an easter egg for the comics where Namor actually gained the powers of the Phoenix during this big arc and wound up flooding Wakanda. They're not doing the Phoenix during this movie, that's like way further off in the future. 
As you can see, they're doing a little bit of the heads up display like they did for Iron Man's character, like you'll see her inside the suit. I think this scene of Shuri with the fire all around her is meant to be her inside the ancestral plane. And I think that's how they're bringing a version of Killmonger back because he is supposed to appear during the movie at some point. And that also kind of influences her choice in using all the gold, kind of like Killmonger's suit on her Black Panther suit. And because in every new movie, when people get new suits, they always do new things. I'm wondering what other upgrades this suit has that makes it different from T'Challa's Black Panther suit. Like obviously it looks different. I'm also assuming that it has some different abilities as well. The really cool connection between Shuri becoming the Black Panther and Doctor Doom versus Wakanda in the comics is that T'Challa actually passed the mantle of Black Panther to Shuri in the comics right after the Doom War storyline when Doctor Doom invaded Wakanda to try and get their vibranium. So there's a lot of references and Easter eggs for that in this movie. But like I said, I'm not expecting to see Doctor Doom actually walking around in this film. I think there'll just be some small teaser and then they'll introduce him in some future project. And speaking of future Doctor Doom stuff, the Ironheart series will also have some Doctor Doom references in it too. Because they said that that series is going to be all about the balance between magic versus technology. And that is Doctor Doom. Like he's a man of magic and a man of science as well. And also because they're doing the new Fantastic Four movie, they might wind up doing a version of Kang in that film instead of doing a version of Doctor Doom as the villain. Like they don't want to do the exact same thing the previous Fantastic Four movies have done and Doctor Doom has always been the villains of those films. So when we actually see them cast someone as Doctor Doom and he actually shows up in a film, I think it'll be something different. Like it won't be Fantastic Four. If you spotted any other Easter eggs and references in the trailer that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. And if you have any big questions about what's happening with the plot of the movie or the characters just in general, I'll do more trailer videos as we get more footage for the movie, but everyone click here for my new Deadpool 3 Wolverine trailer video and click here for my new House of the Dragon episode video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.